So let's continue our discussion on the deals all the reaction. Let's take a closer look at the stereochemistry of the products formed in this reaction. So let's suppose we have the following 1,3-butadiene, our diene molecule that reacts with our simple alkene, our dienophile. So basically on this carbon of the alkene, we have two H groups not shown. On this carbon, we have an H group not shown. And we have our R group, which is basically any arbitrary functional group. So when this reaction takes place, basically there's a possibility of two products that can form. And the two products are formed as a result of the fact that this alkene can basically approach this butadiene in one of two ways, as we'll see in just a moment. So we can form a product where the R group points up away from the double bond. This is known as the exo product, or we can form the endo product in which the R group points downward directly at our pi bond. So exo means away from the pi bond formed in the product and the endo means towards that pi bond. Now the question is why exactly do we form these two different products that have different stereochemistries? So let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have this molecule. This is our conjugated system. So this is 1,3-butadiene. Basically, the electron density is conjugated, spreads out among these four 2p orbitals of the four different carbon atoms. Now, this incoming alkene can approach these two orbitals in one of two ways. In the first manner, basically the R group points away in this direction. And in the second way, this molecule can flip itself so that the R group basically points in the other direction and approaches and when these green orbitals basically align themselves and interact, that's when we form our two bonds. And then our other pi bond is formed here shown by this orange dashed line. So if it forms this way, the R group will point away. If the R group points this way when it approaches, then here it will it will basically point toward this pi bond here. So this is called the exo product because the R group points away from the double bond and this is called the endo because the R group points towards the uh, double bond of our product, the cyclohexene. So the question is, under which conditions will the exo uh, form and under which conditions will the endo form? That is, what is the difference between these two products? So it turns out that the exo product is more stable and lower in energy than the endo product. However, the endo product is formed much quicker at a higher rate than our exo product. And that means that under thermodynamic conditions, under thermodynamics, we see that the exo product is formed. That is, when the temperature is high enough, when we have enough energy, the exo is formed, but under conditions of low temperature, when we have kinetics in control, the endo will form. Now the question is, why is the exo more stable and lower in energy than our endo? And the answer lies in steric hindrance. Basically, because the R group points in this direction where we have a ton of different atoms as well as electron densities, there will be bumping taking place or steric hindrance between these atoms and these atoms as, as well as their electron density. So we see that if the R group is large, then the endo product will prove to be sterically hindered due to the bumping of atoms. So the endo is much more sterically hindered and so is higher in energy than its exo counterpart where the R group points away and so there is no uh, steric hindrance. And that's exactly why 
this is favored thermodynamically it's more stable and lower in energy so when we have enough energy in our reaction then the exo will form now the question is why exactly is the endo formed faster than our exo so remember, whenever we're talking about speed of a reaction or the rate of a reaction, we have to examine the transition state and the activation energy. The fact that the X or the endo is formed faster than the exo means the activation energy for the formation of endo is lower and so the transition state for the endo is lower in energy than that for the exo. The question is why? Well, if we examine the diagram of these two in the transition state, we basically see that when the transition state takes place, for our endo, we have an overlap of our orbitals, these orbitals and these orbitals, as well as this orbital here and this orbital. So I chose some arbitrary R group so that you can see there's this kind of stable, uh, a stabilizing overlap taking place. And that stabilizing overlap basically lowers the transition energy of our formation of endo uh, product reaction. Now, if we compare to this case, this group is far away from these orbitals, and so no stabilizing interaction takes place for the transition state for the formation of our exo product. So once again, it turns out that in the transition state for the formation of the endo product, the orbitals of the group that can actually interact with one another basically stabilize these uh, stabilize the transition state of this molecule. Now, this lowers the energy of the transition state for the endo, but does not lower for the exo, because for the exo case, they are simply, the R group is simply too far away to actually interact in any stabilizing way. So we see that the deals or the reaction always takes place via a one-step concerted mechanism, but we can actually form two different products depending on the way that this approaches our molecule in the first place. If we form the exo, that means the R group points away from the double bond. If we form the endo, the R group points towards our double bond. Now, under thermodynamics conditions, that that means we have enough energy and so we can overcome that larger activation barrier and form the more stable endo, uh, the more stable exo. However, if we're under kinetic control, that means we don't have enough energy, so the pathway will be followed with the lower activation energy and we will form the less stable product, the endo product. 